The Telegraph is finally running Friedman's articles on terrorism. He's learned to moderate his tone then? I don't defend cronyism, Holmes, but I don't wonder the government distrusted him. He has an incautious and very sharp tongue. More importantly, Watson, he has a very sharp mind. We may have need of his wide experience before this is over. I know you respect him. That's certainly enough for me. Are the rest of your lads available, Wiggins? They're on holiday at the... Hello, Charles. We're not interrupting. Just finishing up, Sherlock. How's your brother? Dreadful accident. Coming round, is he? Out of immediate danger, thank you. You remember my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson? Of course. Hello, Doctor. Make yourselves comfortable in the loosest meaning of the word. I'll be with you in a moment. You've assembled a remarkable group of character portraits. They are open, if slightly smeared, windows onto our capricious times. I keep a collection for similar purposes, mostly criminal subjects. And the small posters are my rogues exhibit, villains all. The portrait of Kropotkin is revealing. Admirable man. His major weakness is prophesying war every next fortnight. Even anarchists need a hobby, I suppose. This small portrait is distinctive. Who is it? Or more to the point, what is it? Well observed. That was, and may well be, Louis-Baptiste Gauthier, the terrorist absconded from the Paris cells without a trace in 1857. Very interesting. An artist has introduced age to the image of the younger man's face, so he might be recognized if he reappeared. Exactly. My artist drew on the old picture and then photographed his work. He's a clever craftsman, your artist. Who is he? Nigel Hemmings, illustrator and portrait artist by training. First rate. No one would buy his painting, so he took up photography.
The posters are very well drawn. Same artist. Yes, Hemming says the American police call them mug shots. Hmm, peculiar expression. Some of these must be extrapolations from old photos, adding beards and wrinkles and so on. Yes, and others are subjects I've seen and described. With a first-person account, he can age a man, get his expression right, that sort of thing. Scotland Yard could benefit from his skill. You're right, of course, but would they? I heard Lestrade say Bertillon's system of criminal identification was a bunch of foreign nonsense. He takes so badly to new methods. Don't I know it? I'm trying to identify a man, Charles. Might I explore your memory? You can try. I assume your inquiry is confidential? Acute as ever. The man figures somehow in the murder of a civil servant. Secrets of state are at risk. What does he look like? I've never seen him, but one who did says he's thickly built, fair, with a small discoloration on his bearded face, perhaps a birthmark. He was wearing a dark slouch hat and cape. And he speaks German. Language is not decisive. He could be German, Austrian, Prussian, Hungarian, Polish, even Russian. Anything else? Regrettably, no. The witness vantage point and the lack of light made expression and gait unremarkable. He couldn't even guess at his age. No one springs to mind, Sherlock. Or rather, ten men do, but are they in England? Is he a criminal, a secret agent, a diplomat? With so little to differentiate them, I'm useless, I'm afraid. With such meagre details, my hopes were not high. Give me particulars, man, then maybe I can help. Or if not me, someone I know. Do you still have associates whom you trust at the Home Office? Ah, you suspect the involvement of a foreign power, don't you? Yes, I was thinking along those lines myself. Listen, when you discover the man's identity, I can introduce you to someone who might help. Thank you, Charles. A pleasure to see you, Sherlock. You're always onto something intriguing. Uh, might I have young Hemming's address? He's a staff photographer for The Standard. I would prefer a less public audience. Oh, yes, of course. Now, you can often find him in his garret at 14 Montague Street, just across from the British Museum. Have you heard anything about terrorist involvement in the Diogenes explosion? Not a whisper. It was an accident, certainly, wasn't it? To say I hope so would be as unseemly as it would be insincere. But if you've heard nothing, let it be. Is this profusion of papers really necessary? Place is a fire hazard. Impossible to have too many papers. Watson is always at me to cut down on my consumption. One should never be without a fresh newspaper. No item is more serviceable. Absorbs grease from fish and chips, wraps garbage, or lines a threadbare coat. Use it as a towel, a fan, a sunshade, an umbrella, a dustpan, a carpet, and if worse comes to worse, heaven forfend, you can always read it. Help yourself to the telegraph. It's hot off the press. Your argument is exhausting, if not compelling. Have you had more thoughts about my subject, Charles? I rather expected a mugshot for reference. By the way, are you certain he wears a beard? According to my source. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Holmes. I've heard of you. I'm just trying this film. With you in half a mo.
I saw your work at Friedman's. It's exceptional. Would you make a mug shot of someone for me? Simplest pie. Let's start with a facial shape. Round, oblong, heart-shaped. You get the idea. I've actually never seen the subject, just heard him described. Not enough, Mr. Holmes. Without a witness, I can't do better than a caricature. You can't keep me to rights, you see. Tell me the nose is too wide and such like. I'm sorry. I need your help, Mr. Needham. Will you come with us, please? Why this time? A picture artist needs you to describe the man you saw at the needle. The third man. I wouldn't expect you to do it for free. Oh, that's all right then. A commission, like. As long as the brute don't know it's me what described him, he had a dangerous aspect. Brought the eyes, have you? Be right with you. Does the work of a professional photographer appeal to you, Needham? What would I have to do, Mr. Holmes? They'd pay you to look at certain things and take pictures with a camera. Most of what I see, I'd rather forget. Would they pay me to forget? Not for what you've seen, sir. Unfortunately, no one would pay for that. This is Mr. Needham. He has seen the person I want drawn. Excellent. You and I will get busy. Perhaps you'll occupy yourself, Mr. Holmes. Needham, please describe the gentleman you saw in profile at the embankment. The third man. I can't add nothing to what I already told you, Mr. Holmes. A tall man with an unkempt beard and a stain of some sort on his left cheek, correct? That's him. Perhaps you could give us a moment alone, Mr. Holmes? We'll put something together. Oh, sorry. Of course. I'll look about, shall I? You've a rare talent, Mr. Hemmings. Why not earn your living as a painter? My art's called unsuitable on Bond Street, Mr. Holmes. People don't want to look at what I paint, let alone pay for it. So you've settled on photographs? I'm resigned to it. My photos of accidents and domestic disasters pay the rent. They give me the time for my work. How would you evaluate Needham's powers of observation? Acute. It was clear on the facial structure and proportions, cast of the eyes and position of the ears. There are some problems, but we muddled through. I wonder if the stain is a scar. That's an intriguing thought. May I take the drawing with me? Of course. Hope it helps. I believe you did quite well, Mr. Needham. Mr. Emming says so. His questions reminded me of things about the gent I'd forgot. In investigations and life, the right answers are impossible to discover without the right questions.
Do you mix your own chemicals and develop your own film? Just my private snaps. I mix up an alkali developer in the sink. What mixture do you use? Phenol is a reducing agent, sodium sulfite to control the rate of development and a pinch of potassium salt to prevent fogging. Then you fix the photograph with water and sodium thiol sulfate. You know about photography. Just a few pertinent details. Your advice was inestimable. Hemmings gave individuality to a generic face. I'm not surprised. He's a marvel. Ah, yes, he was among my candidates. The beard is new, probably false. He has dark hair. You're moving in consequential circles, Sherlock. Colonel Eric Merlindorf, alias Wachthund, the guard dog. He's Prussian, of course. The facial stain is a distinctively horrible dueling scar. Only a fraction of it shows here. It's huge, and he wears it like an angry mask. Who is he? Principal agent and factotum of the German Imperial Chancellor, Otto von Bismarck. Fiercely loyal to his employer's interests and protective of his reputation. A very cold customer. What's he doing in London, I wonder? No good, I assure you. Is he an official agent of Imperial Germany? Not exactly. But I've invited an old friend to join us who can address that issue. Given your previous remarks and our shared suspicions, I thought he might be helpful. Is that a problem? No. I'm grateful. Your discretion and judgment in such matters is unquestioned. Carter, would you come in, please? Sherlock Holmes, Dr. Watson, Fairfax Carter, Home Office Attaché. I've heard your name from Mycroft, sir. Friedman has filled you in? As he was able. Might you put us more in the picture? No. Mycroft has requested secrecy. I shall respect that. Reputations are at stake. The nation's security, maybe. If I fail, you should know all. If I succeed, you will learn no more than you know now. Can we deal on that basis? I am not entirely without other sources of information, as I think you know. Your commitment to your brother's cause is commendable.
You presumably heard us speaking of Colonel Merlindorf? I did. It must be assumed that this Prussian is involved in an operation hostile to British interests. Is it possible he has the Kaiser's blessing and the sanction of the German imperial government? I don't believe so. I fervently hope not. He would not risk it. He would not do it. Your reasons? The Kaiser is trying to curb the power and influence of his bitter rival, the domineering Imperial Chancellor Otto von Bismarck. Explain, please. Wilhelm has been courting favor throughout Europe, separating himself from Bismarck's aggressive policies. Discovery of such an operation would undermine his efforts to establish his own authority and demolish the progress he has made in repairing Bismarck's damage. Besides, he is currently well disposed toward his mama, the Empress Frederick, who despises the Chancellor. Finally, he would risk the displeasure of his grandmama, Queen Victoria, and his cousins at this critical time. If it's not an official operation, what might the Prussians' motives be? I cannot say with assurance, but I would hazard that whatever he is doing here is intended to enhance the Chancellor's position with the German military and re-establish his dominance over the Emperor. I see. Merlindorf is Bismarck's creature, not the Kaiser's. Exactly. Can you help me gain access to the Kaiser? I know he's in London. I could arrange an interview. The Kaiser, as it happens, is familiar with your name and reputation. But this would be strictly a personal affair. The government must not be suspected of having any official involvement in your inquiry. That's understood. You'll inform us of a time and place? I'll send a message to your lodgings. What kind of man is the Kaiser? Not brilliant, but he's keen and energetic. Has the regrettable habit of speaking of himself in the third person. Convinced that he belongs to a distinct order of mankind designated for monarchy by the grace of God. And Bismarck wants to put his thumb in the eye of that belief? Correct. As a boy, he imitated Bismarck as an act of parental defiance. Now he's alarmed the Chancellor by imitating Frederick the Great. In the end, we believe him fundamentally wiser and more progressive than Bismarck. They'll certainly come to blows, and given your inquiry, may have done already. Have you made any deductions, Watson? None, Holmes. I have observed too little and understood even less. Your honesty is both comfort and caution to me. Let us proceed.
I'd like a word with Mr. Whitney. Can you help? I don't keep his social calendar, Mr. Holmes. Only the Queen's business is conducted here. You can't remain. Do you know where I might find him? For Chairman Holmes' sake, I'll tell you that Whitney's probably wasting away in his bath. Now please leave. Lady Fanshawe, I am Sherlock Holmes, and this is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. Was I expecting you? Where's that butler? Are you the workman I ordered? I have some fascinating ideas for this foyer. We'd like to speak with Sir Avery, please. Is he available? I'm not his man Friday. I imagine he's roaming somewhere with Hodgkins. Who knows? It's wrong to ask a lady questions she doesn't know the answers to. Ask me something I know. That might be difficult. It's most aggravating. You're certain you haven't come from that charming Sloane Street Gallery? I have more brilliant ideas for improving the foyer. If I may ask, why have you painted the architecture and statuary? Marble is so drab, don't you think? No life to it. My advisor says it's traditional. The Romans painted everything. Or was it the Japanese? Oh, it doesn't matter, I suppose. People from a long time ago. Some sad associations here, Watson. You called it the case of the serrated scalpel, I believe. Yes, a heart-wrenching business. But in the end, a job well done. The Brumwells are all deceased. I wonder if the staff stayed on. I doubt it. They were lifetime retainers to the family. Oh, the Brumwell butler was a trial. Pettifog, Petticoat... No, Pettigrew, wasn't it? Pettigrew by name, petulant by nature. Fine conceit, Doctor. And even better if he's still about. What impression have you formed of the lady's taste, Watson? She has none. Even the lovely things have been ruined by her excesses. Beauty is wasted on such people. May I speak with Pettigrew, please? Pettigrew receives callers on his own time. Sunday afternoons. Use the servant's entrance. Uh, was there something else? Watson, please give me your sense of Lady Fanshawe. She is what I believe the Americans call dizzy. Well said, whatever it means. Hmm. It means confused, flighty, and credulous in the extreme. That suggests a line of attack. Lady Fanshawe, I must speak with Pettigrew uh, to make delivery arrangements. You are from that art gallery. I knew it. Oh, I so love a surprise. This will be a rather large one. What is it? What is it? Oh, Avery, such a dear. I won't tell him you told. I mustn't, Lady Fanshawe. I've said too much already. The sooner I speak to Pettigrew, the sooner I can deliver. Pettigrew? Come this instant. Au revoir, gentlemen. I won't say goodbye. Pettigrew?
Do you remember us, Pettigrew? Try as I might to forget, Mr. Holmes, I do. Your manners were perhaps lost in the effort. Never mind. Let's avoid a bad start. Is Sir Avery available? No. Lucky man is rarely about when Lady Fanshawe is, and she's always here. Is Lady Fanshawe likely to know Sir Avery's whereabouts? Milady knows very little about anything. In between bouts of redecorating, she entertains the Beaumont and makes unreasonable demands on the staff. But perhaps she pays well? In truth, she is mean and bloody-minded, and I'm this close to giving notice. Was there something you wanted beyond below stairs, gossip? Where does Sir Avery spend his time? Away from the Ministry? I don't know. If that's all, you may leave a card if you wish. My business is urgent, Pettigrew. One of his colleagues has died horribly. Death seems to follow you about, Mr. Holmes. A combination of occupational hazard and bad luck, I imagine. Have your joke, Pettigrew. I'm not the one wearing the clown suit. Please don't allow personal enmity to color your judgment. I need your help. Helping you, Mr. Holmes, rarely helps me. Have you noticed? I purposefully kept your name from the Brumwell debacle. I don't say you were an accomplice, but Lestrade believed you had guilty knowledge of your employer's scheme. Do not repay me with animosity. You owe me none. The sting of Lord Brumwell's demise is still fresh, I apologize. When Sir Avery is not at what he calls his work, he can usually be found snoozing at the Diogenes Club or feeding the birds in St. James Park. Sir Avery is very old to be out alone. Is his attendant called Hodgkins? Hodgkins is Sir Avery's body servant. Very intimidating party, very dear to the old gentleman. And the feeling is mutual. Of course. I recall him now. The scourge of the Crimea. The same. Still wears his campaign badges and hat. Honours and protects them like his patron. Recently disassembled a man in the Aldersgate underground for having the temerity to ask Sir Avery the time of day. A cautionary tale, thank you. Hello, Birdie. Business brisk? Not so as you'd notice, Mr. Holmes. After government's passed by and trade still stinks, I wager not much of the Queen's work got done today. <laughs> I'm sure you're right. Fred in fine form? As always. More than once I've wished I had his disposition. Have you spoken with Sir Avery Fanshawe recently? Oh, not in twenty years. He's across the way now at his usual spot. Oh, fool thinks I ridiculed him. I told him his mixture was too rich for songbirds. Took it as a personal affront. He attracts only pigeons and blames me for it. <laughs> There's no reasoning with a man whose passion is thwarted. Is that the voice of sadder but wiser experience, Watson? Never mind. You're spot on and it gives me an idea. Let's feed the birds. Give me a mix to draw the best warblers, Mr. Haywood. For sixpence, Mr. Holmes, I'll guarantee an exaltation of larks.
Might I have a word with Sir Avery? If you're tired of this life, you can try. Be a good lad and push off. I'll only take a moment. If you don't want it to be your last, don't linger. Move on now. As advertised, Hodgkins is a menacing brute, and Sir Avery was oblivious. I hope recent demands have not exhausted your imagination and left us bereft of the means for dealing with him short of force. Efforts to overpower him would be futile, Watson, but I'm not prepared for failure. I need to capture Sir Avery's interest another way. Your efforts are angering the old boy. They make an unusual pair, do they not, Watson? If the Queen's retainers are as vigilant as Mr. Hodgkins, she is well served. A poet could describe their relationship better than a policeman. You recognize something in yourself, Doctor. Devotion to a chosen duty. Thank you, Holmes. What civil servant or city man wouldn't prefer these surroundings to his office? None with a modicum of sense and the intelligence to use it. Get away from here now! Could you play a lilting waltz for me, buddy? With pleasure, Mr. Holmes. Do that again, and I'll have you up on charges before the RSPCA. And then I'll have you shot. Cruelty to animals, insupportable. Your efforts are angering the old boy. Your dedication to Sir Avery does you credit, but I have official business to discuss.
I'll say this once, slowly. Leave now and nobody gets hurt. Stay and you're for the water or worse. I believe Hodgkins has the wherewithal to deliver on his threats. Agreed. And I have no desire to test a contrary hypothesis. You'll have to fabricate a more subtle approach to Sir Avery. Perhaps I can distract Hodgkins by dividing his devotion in disparate directions. Sometimes your speech is perfectly opaque, Holmes. Remember what Pettigrew said about the campaign cap? With assistance from more nimble fingers, I might borrow it. Does Fred take instruction, Birdie? If you mean will he do on command what he does by nature, the answer is sometimes. I need to talk to Sir Avery. Might Fred create a diversion to occupy Hodgkins? Not a problem. Brilliant. I'm told the old warhorse is very fond of his campaign cap. Might Fred lift it and take him on a romp through the park? Perfect. But he's only part of your problem. His absence is no guarantee that Fenshaw will talk. He's attuned to birds, not people. Sir Avery? Your family connections do not interest me, young man. How are you drawing those lovely birds? What are you feeding them? My personal mixture. Mm. Probably infused with some irresistible avian narcotic. Where might a fellow get some? Mycroft was injured in the incident that levelled the Diogenes Club. Hmm. You're Holmes' brother, are you? Why didn't you say so? Heard he'll recover. Explosions are damned nuisance. Where's a fella supposed to get his grub? I have some questions about the termination of the investigation into the stolen formula. Blasted committee hearings, insufferably boring. Stolen formula, my Aunt Fanny. Things disappear from that room all the time and reappear. Even if it was stolen, who cares? Talk of technical advantages, military nonsense. <laughs> I've learned that much in my life. People don't matter. Committee's useless. I'm an old man. I don't have unlimited time. Cuts into my park visits. Is that why you voted to terminate the investigation? And what if it was? These birds depend on me. And me on them, I suppose. I've seen these special earrings come to nothing a hundred times. You could be wrong this once.
Do you recall who initiated the demand to terminate the investigation? Silverbridge, I think, or Lawton. I just joined the pro group and saw no evidence for theft. Holmes' nose was out of joint over the decision, very upset. But stunned him to a lad, brandy at the club, smooth things over. If there was a club. Would it surprise you to learn that Thomas Pratt has been murdered? Hmm. Among the defects of old age is that one loses the capacity to be surprised. Do you know why he was killed? I believe he was materially involved in the formula's disappearance. Really? Huh. You could be right, I suppose. You might have taken it. I'm sorry for him. It was a closed book. Sort of a chap with secrets. He lost his family young, lost his friends later, and now he's lost his life. And for what? Perhaps I've lived too long, Mr. Holmes. The world has grown strange and hard and passed me by. Sir Avery, where might I find the reading room char, Mrs. Ratchet? Why bother her? Just tying up some loose ends. Mm, wonderful woman, reliable, pleasant, been in the ministry forever. A little pink, I'm told, is if that mattered. She lives just east of Spitalfield Market. Don't know the address, appalling place. Hodgkins and I saw her home one night. Most distressing. If you find her, she's likely to be closed mouthed. You might use my name. I wish Mycroft had annotated his summary. I don't believe Fanshawe is involved. That's a guess, surely. Mycroft suspected all committee members. No, I don't believe he ever thought all members were materially involved. He implied they must all be suspects until they could be eliminated from suspicion. By observation, I have eliminated Fanshawe. He has mostly retreated to a world of his own devising and is incurious about any other. It is not an unattractive world. Remember your Plato. Socrates says the unexamined life is not worth living. Plato was a younger, less experienced man than Sir Avery, as was Socrates for that matter, and neither of them knew Lady Fanshawe.